Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we're starting a new project. Now, if you've been with me for a little while, you would know that you've been watching on a Monday puppy updates. Well, puppies have all found their homes, so Mondays are now free. Last Monday, as I was giving you an update on all of the new owners, I just stitched a blank canvas with in mind a bowl, a fabric bowl that I can pop things into when I finish a video to stitch later on. So my homework bowls. So in Brisbane, I have all sorts of bowls at my ready, but nothing here at Barham. So I said to Susanna, I really need to create something that I can carry a project in um, that's sort of open a little bit. So I don't want to rummage. I want to be able to place out what I need, sit down beside the couch and just grab beads or threads or whatever from after I finish filming with you guys. And this new environment I'm in, I'm seeing all sorts of new birds around me. So I was chatting to Susanna, as I said, I said, I've got these gorgeous fairy wrens. And I remember Susanna had done a project some time back where she had put together a PDF and kits and was doing these birds all over a panel of fabric. So I said to her, any chance that she could take three pages from that whole project and pop them up just as a single PDF and we revisit the patterns because there was a fairy wren in amongst it, which is also helping me with another project that I'm doing with a friend who my cousin is coming over and sitting and stitching every so often. And she wanted to make a willy wagtail. Now I'm not sure if willy wagtails are in other countries I'll post a picture of the willy wagtail at the end of the video. Um, but it's a similar little bird to this. And I, I said to Susanna, I think I can adapt your fairy wren pattern to the willy wagtail as well. And she's just doing a, a little slow stitch panel. It's her first time slow stitching. And she wanted to do a little willy wagtail. <clears throat> it has um, meaning to her family, especially her husband. So it's going to be a Christmas gift um, framed. So that sort of sent me on the journey to find a bird pattern for my cousin and in the process the, the fabric bowl popped into my head and I thought of maybe a fat quarter, I think it's 12 inches by 12 inches, so I thought at least while I chat about the puppies and their homes, I'm making the base, which was some wadding and which was a piece of felt, but you could use anything. It was just a, a piece of felt that I had in the cupboard here, a bit of calico, and then the background fabric. So, all right, the plan is to create this fairy wren. The pattern is on Susanna's website. I'll put the links below. She's kindly grabbed three pages from that a previous project and has just listed these gorgeous bird patterns. Now, the clever thing that um, Susanna's done is she's actually painted the birds as well, which is gonna help us down the track because here's all the pieces that we need to cut out, find fabrics to suit, and then place on our little bird. And because she has painted it and shaded we can now have a look at this and put some extra stitching in under a tummy. Let's say you wanted to do the tufted titmouse. <clears throat> you could stitch in some little belly feathers because Susanna has painted in watercolor all of these little birds and there's all sorts here. So some of them, well, most of these aren't in Australia, but they're common birds in all of our work, like the cardinals are always, the robins are always in our Christmas stitching and things like that. So it's a handy little pattern to have. And this guy, that's just a great different shape bird. He'd be a bit of fun to stitch this fellow. Yeah, so anyway, for now, I'm interested in the fairy wren, and I'm pretty sure I can adapt that to a willy wagtail for my cousin. But let's, let's back it up a little bit. So I have Invisible Stitched while I was chatting in the last puppy video, these three layers together. 
So that's, that's my base. Now, when I was in France earlier in the year, I bought this at a, um, oh, what do you call them? They're like, I'm just gonna come up a little bit so you get a bit more of a view. At a touristy thing. You know, they're everywhere when you go to countries and you buy your postcards and things like that. Well, the ones in France were just full chockers with stuff, cups and key rings and oh, random stuff. And I spotted this. I think it was the fabric that drew me in. Now, it's a croissant basket in this scenario, but they've been around a while. There is heaps of videos on YouTube's, YouTube on how to make these exactly as you see it here. Now, this has got cardboard in it to strengthen the sides. And then these little ties are stitched into the seam to create, you know, structure on the sides. <clears throat> Now, I don't think I'll be making exactly the same thing, but, well, it might be very close. I love these little corners. I will probably stitch that solid. It won't be a tie. I'm not sure if I will need the cardboard because by the time I put layers of fabric and lace and stitching, and it might be strong enough. And I like the idea that it's soft and mushy. Having said that, if I'm filling this full of bits and pieces to go to, you know, sewing, maybe I will want a bit of structure. That's a decision for another day. But first, I just want to start the process of layering the fabrics and, um, you know, building some pieces that I can use to turn into this little basket. So if you don't want to do all the stitching and you want to just make one of these baskets, I'll have a look through YouTube and see if I can find someone out there that, that does it. But to be honest, this piece of fabric <clears throat> for this basket, I don't have a long enough ruler, but let's say it's 35 centimetres by... 33 centimeters, so it's not even square. Um, they've got two layers of fabric. They've stitched around the perimeter. They've then put some card here, card here, and card down the bottom here. And then there's a piece in the center there, and they've just run the sewing machine through. But you could hand stitch it. And then in the process of stitching this exterior, it'd be wrong sides together. The fabric would be wrong sides together. They would put these ties in there. So when you turned it out, you would have <coughs> capsulated your fabric seams, your straps and the card. So it wouldn't be too hard to figure this out if you didn't want to do a slow stitch piece and you just wanted to quickly maybe create one of these for a Christmas gift. Wouldn't that be great full of chocolates? Oh, chocolates, nuts, dried fruit, make a great hamper base. So that's the inspiration from this little tourist piece that I picked up. And I love how it folds up. So that can go back into the cupboard for, you know, when you want to bring your croissants out again. So that's the inspiration. Mine is 12 inches by 12 inches. I figured that was big enough. Now, I will need some iron-on uh, Visafix. This allows me to trace out all the little bird elements, adhere this to the fabric that I choose for the red and the background. I'm not going to do that today, but I will need to know a rough size of the wren. So... What my first plan is to make some space on my table, it's because it's about to get messy, is I need to build my background a little bit more. Now, this piece of fabric I actually cut out for my cousin the other day because she's starting with a similar size piece. And we said, okay, if the willy wagtail sits here, let's just work on the background. And this piece is still here. So I might steal it for now. I can always cut her another piece um, because I think that will 
probably work really well for my woolly wagtail. If anything, it probably needs to be a bit smaller. So what I thought I might do is just do a rough sketch. Where would be my heat soluble pen? That just would be too handy to have it nearby. But of course, I didn't think of that. I don't really want to use pencil because it's going to mark it. But I think I can probably say, there you go. That reel of cotton is the body of the wren. Then it's another reel of cotton in height. Everything else sits on the body by the beak. So there, there. That's as big as the wren's going to be. So let's have a think about... I'm not going to use this piece of fabric because it's too big for me. I need it to probably only be about that. And it'd be a shame to cut it where I can go to the original piece and cut out the exact piece that I need. Let's have a look at this as my size gauge. <clears throat> We're just going to have a bit of a, I guess, a mud map of the space I need. Because the other thing that I need to take into account that my cousin doesn't, because hers is going into a frame, hers is about that big, about that big, is I've got sides. How big are we going to make our sides? I was thinking about two inches. About five centimetres. I need to find my pen. I'm going to pause the video, find my heat soluble pen, and we're going to draw in my boundaries. Because I know what will happen. I'll get out of hand. Do I need to? Because I'm going to stitch up the sides and then that'll turn up. Yeah, I don't need to. I'm going to keep going. Because I will just pop a pin here to tell me that the side is going to kick up in the air there. Because I want all my pretty stitching to go up the side. So I don't really need to worry about the boundaries. The only time I need to worry about this boundary business is the placement of the bird because we don't want him kicking up the side. So I think we will be fine. I don't want to pause the video. I just want to get into it. Plus I don't know where the pen got to. And I have a window of one hour to film this video because then I need to go and do a few chores. And my husband will be tapping his toes at the front door saying, where is that girl? We need to get going. So if little Wren sits here, and then the tail sits there. Don't you like the way I measure things? But it will work. That is the size I need. So, fabric. Luckily, I have a nice selection of blue fabric with me. Now, I had been struggling for a little bit because I didn't think I had anything and I had been using all sorts, but I packed up some of my Japanese fabrics. My um, rice bag with scraps is still at home, but this is here. So I have the opportunity here to nibble into some of these beautiful fabrics. Let's have a, it's a shame I don't have my scraps, but oh well. Look at those. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Let's just pull a few things out. Oh, what a shame, they had big pieces and I don't have my scraps. There's some whites. Hang on, what's under there? So just bear with me, guys, as I unpack. Mind you, I did take, you know, scraps from these pieces. So it's not like it's sacrilege to be cutting into them. Okay. At least this will get me started with a bit of a colour palette that I know works because we've done other projects in it. So I'm just going to throw them around. 
not sure about that one. It might be too, too Japanese. I, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if they've got fairy wrens in Japan. I just like the color palette. Now, as for the colors on the birdie, I'm not going to stress about that too much because I'll find something. And I think it'll all blend if when I go to do all the little blue pieces, I find a blue maybe even from these that complements, you know, the piece. And if there's something from here that drops into here, well, you know, won't be, won't be a big problem. All right. So where do we start? We start with some scissors and we're going to chop into some fabric. And there's our template. Let's get myself organized. My goodness me. I'm just going to do it. So the theory is I'm going to lay down fabrics, random, do some decorative stitching on them. It won't be anything like a floral or, you know, things like that. It'll be just straight stitch because I want the bird to be the feature. So it's going to be a case of just patching together some yummy favourite textiles. I don't want to overthink it. I just want to do... At least now I'll have some pieces that I can play with, cut out. So my scrappy blue barn pile is building. You just can't bring everything yet because I'm living in two places at the moment. So if I was to bring all my Japanese fabrics up, you can guarantee I will want, want to do a project and it'll all be here and I'll be there. And uh, so I'm trying my darndest. See, look, I've been here before nibbling. And here comes the fudge, of course. The moment I turn the camera on, he crawls out of bed and comes over to say hello. Because I'm talking and he's like, who are you talking to, mum? You watch, he's gonna jump up on that table like usual. Clear the spot for the fudge. Okay, so I'm just, I guess, nibbling off a bit from, hello, fudgy, these fabrics. It'll be so good to have a bowl that's using some of these gorgeous treasures. And as I cut a bit off, I'll just put it to one side because then I know we have a morsel. And then little blue wren. Oh, look at that. That's indigo dyed fabric. Ooh, hang on. So now that I say that, is that indigo? Maybe not. That came from the retreat, the forage, Lisa Matok retreat. That was meant to be a vase base of a big bunch of flowers in a stitchery but I didn't end up that's a bit too Japanese I think but it does sort of remind me of the wind and birds but it, I believe it's meant to be the, the ocean I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that one to one side you know the other reason too is it's very pale very white I want this to be the focus so if anything I want the bowl to be dark and moody and then there's in the bottom of the bowl is this bright little bird looking at me. Got a piece of fabric. We can have some floral. I think that works with a little a little um, wren. Let me know if you have fairy wrens in your country. I could imagine they'd be Prolific. I should have researched that. Are they native to Australia? I don't, don't know. Maybe they are. Should have done my homework, shouldn't I? 
Lately, I seem to be talking a lot about Australian animals, um, rabbits and raw hares and goannas and all sorts of critters. That's what happens when you move to a new environment. You sort of start bumping into the natives, the locals. Now, I guess the question too is how densely stitched, well, stitching is always going to be dense, but how dense is the fabric that I lay down? To me, that feels like it should be involved in the bird. It's very blue, where these are very navy. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna hold back on that one. I think I will hold back on that. Feels very cherry blossom Japanese. I know these are two Japanese, but I sort of feel like, I think I can get rid of. I sort of feel like I've got more of a neutral splash of Japanese fabric. So I might tuck that under there, that little guy. So the question will be how heavily embellished with fabrics do I go? I guess the more fabric I have, the more chance it'll be strong and it will stand on its own accord. But I'm gonna pin that on there. I think I'll cut a new piece. We'll see. At least it's found its home, so I can I can work around that. Need it to be random. pins that are underneath. Try not to think too hard guys. I'm trying just to lay it down. I have a feeling I might need to reinforce it with a little bit of card. Time will tell. It's surprising how how quickly things, you know, bulk up with stitch and fabric. Okay. I'm sort of trying to encapsulate that a little bit, but see a bit of that. Got a bit of a stripe here. That's the same fabric, isn't it? I don't know if I want that. I'm going to put that through there. So it's a scrappy bowl, a fabric scrappy bowl. It's going to have three layers to the construction. There'll be the background. Then we'll come up with something here which I don't know what that is yet. And then the feature. So it's sort of three, three steps to it. The stitching process is a three, a feature piece. So yeah, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. One doesn't want to commit to too much yet because she could change her mind. <laughs> She's very likely to change your mind. I'm sort of feeling like I need that little piece. Gosh, can you guys even see? Yep, okay. I like how that's there and that's there. That's there and that's there. I've got a bit of a floral thing happening there. Let's just pin that down. I guess if you're new to all of this, don't overthink it, guys. 
just throw it down pin it down stitch it down and just let the thing evolve like i've got quite big pieces here i might find that once i get this layer down so i've still got this little guy too maybe he could be part of the wren what was the blue that one and that one hmm let's just leave them for a minute i have all these torpy colors here too but I don't think I'm going to use them. Maybe they go towards the wren because we do need black and we need some browns. Okay, they're not being used. Decision made. That is to do with the wren. Right. Here's a scrap that's been rolling around my desk for a few videos. You have now got a home. That's not exactly Japanese, mind you. That's from a placemat that I picked up at an op store. This chambray underneath was a, just a piece of fabric that was at the op store that someone had started cutting out on um, a little pinnacle address. So if you've been around my channel for a bit you'll probably remember me showing you this little dress cut out. I just love the fabric and I love how it's lightweight. So they're spare at the moment. I don't think. Like I said, we can always come back through and put smaller pieces again. Like that gets really interesting when you start cutting out little bits like this. Here we go, we're doing it. And just placing them down just little little morsels turn that around the other way it starts to take the blockiness am I gonna regret that where's my bird gonna stand there with the tail swishing up there so no we're good so that's there I might put another little piece just a little bit I sort of feel like I need to do that. All right, see that line joins up with that line. It doesn't look right. That is going to be a pinched corner, so that's that's gone. Let's just move it where I might see it. Well, I'm overthinking it probably, but... There we go, stop thinking. Just stitch it down, pin it down. Now, I'm just thinking about this. Do I use it? What I like about this piece of fabric, let's have a little look, is it has a edge. I could see my cousin's face when I cut it out. She was like, oh, there's an, a folded edge there because it, it's an old antique, um, what do they call them? Napkins that I picked up in France. And as soon as I told her, like, the potential age of this thing, she got really skittish. She was like, oh, I can't use that. And I'm like, yes, you can. You just got to use these things. I'm going to use it. See this edge? Oh, let's turn it over. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Look, it's folded and someone's hand stitched it. That's what we're going to use. We're going to find its home right now. Just bear with me, guys. I'm just going to make some critical decisions here and just chop it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Probably overthinking a little bit at the moment, but one will be brave and one will just chop it. Where's my measuring tool? Little wren. That little blue. Yep, just a bit. 
don't want it peeking out too low here. So I'm just going to sneak a little bit off of it. It's like a little stage for our bird. Maybe I do that. Do I do that? I don't know how I had it, but anyway, doesn't matter. Something better may come of it. And then that and that is over there like that. See that seam coming up there has made me think twice about tucking this in under. which I'm okay with, but now I feel like I need something there. When that was under there, and probably under there, I can't remember now, but because of this seam, I don't want to hide it. So maybe I need to do that. I really like that corner peeking in there. It sort of closes the bowl in. Where's our two and a half or two inch size? So that's still good. That'll nestle in nicely there. If anything, I could probably move it over a fraction. Just in case that gets a bit of a curved edge. I don't want it dead center. I want the, the piece to be a little bit, I do like that blue on there, so I think I just need to rethink, come on, I think I just, and I love the blue there, and I've got this little rough edge here, this piece here, maybe it just needs to come, see I love that frayed edge. Maybe it just needs to tuck in there and a little, little bit of that chambray. Maybe it brings it down to there. That's better. Let me have a look in the camera, see what you guys are seeing. Yeah, I think that's not a bad start. I didn't want to cover up the whole background because that's beautiful and complementary to the piece. It's not like that's a piece of calico and we're trying to disguise... Okay, so we've got our spot for our bird. We've got a, a, a smattering of fabric scooting around the outside. We've got some interesting textures, this seam, that selvage, this frayed edge. I'm sure by the time I handle it and stitch it, there'll be all sorts of frayed edges. Okay, I'm happy with that. Got a few little scraps here spare. We're not using this because I just don't think it suits the project. I love it, but it's just not quite right. I wonder if there's any other fabrics I've missed in that box. Just having a glance. No, they're all neutral. Okay, I'm going to put those all away. And we have this little pile of yumminess for the wren and some scraps, which we'll just pop into my scrap basket. Yeah, is there anything in here that... See, I love this. It's not Japanese, but it feels very, um, it's Hessian. It feels Primitive. Does that make sense? Feels textural. I could add lace, but I just don't feel like this bowl. I just don't feel like it needs lace, to be honest. I'm going to put that there. What the hang? Just a little morsel or something. If I don't like it, I can remove it. It helps layer that a little bit do with another little piece because I can't help myself cut a rectangle a bit smaller that side will come up so it's probably not real good there 
There we go. Okay. So this is for the bird. So we at least got somewhere to go for the wren in another video. So I will now invisible stitch this all down. I know some of, ow, there's a pin there. Oh, look. I know some of you are thinking this invisible stitch business is a, a lot of work, but it's so worth it and it helps, it helps um, melt your fabrics together. Does that make sense? And especially things like the owl. Goodness me. Stop yabbering and flapping the wings around. Um, it helps meld your fabrics together. So it really is worth it. And it's slow stitch. Like, it doesn't matter that it takes a bit longer. So, we, oh, look, I'm bleeding, guys. <laughs> my poor finger there's a lot of pins here another reason why I'm visible stitch everything down because of the pins why would you want to suffer and embroider these patches of fabric down with um, pins everywhere that are gonna bite you so for you newbies out there I know you're probably going oh visible stitch what a painful process Trust me, it's therapeutic. It slows you down a little because you can now look at your piece as you meander around, stitching each little patch down, or layer or whatever it may be, and have a think of your design. Like, where are you heading with it? What do you want to change? This just gives you that moment to stop and smell the roses because you might decide that you hate something which is a strong word, but you might dislike the placement of a particular fabric. Well, now, see how it gets caught? That's another benefit. You've got a chance to change things. The other thing that this gives me is, I know I want to do stitching on it all, decorative stitching using some crochet cotton, number eight DMC crochet cotton, so nothing fancy. Well, I can have a look at each piece now as I do this step and go, well, if I do my running stitch this way, what would I do with this? What would I do with this little piece? It'll be a mix of overcast stitch, running stitch. I might get a bit fancy and do some fly stitch through here just for, you know, random. Who knows? But by slowing down a moment, and doing this step, I think it's well worth it. I can already feel that this fabric is bulking up. So I guess once I get to the end, I'll then decide whether we need to put some fa um, cardboard through here, like the French um, bread basket that I had. It'll, it'll depend on how it feels in my hand, I think. If it feels floppy, well, that's no good. I'm going to be dropping cottons as I walk towards the couch with my homework in hand. But time will tell. It always surprises me how thick my slow stitch pieces feel when I start really you know, getting into all the bits and bobs that go onto them, all the fabrics. So I've got a really big needle with a really big eye, so it's going to come unthreaded really easily. So how am I going for time? I'm yabbering away 40 minutes. So I've got another 20 minutes-ish. So my homework will be to get the invisible stitch done, go through and do a bit of fancy stitches. So if you're joining in with me and you're going to make yourself a fabric bowl, 
for your craft table, inspired by the French bread basket. I don't know, what do you call those things? Bread baskets? That's your homework, to get your pieces down, get your layers created. I know already some of you have created this base layer. Last Monday, I saw a few comments to say, I'm off to sort that out. One idea I had way back when this was floating in my brain is this is a, a fat quarter. Now, I know in Brisbane I've got some, you know, fat quarter packs with some gorgeous fabrics. So there's maybe I just pick a fat quarter and drop it straight on and that becomes my fabric. So, but I'm not sure yet. Now that I've gone down the Japanese fabric, I don't know if I've got anything that is that theme. I've got a lot of tilde fat quarters, you know, just random that may not really suit where this has gone. So that's something I need to have a think about. And I'd say by the time you've watched this video, I'm actually back in Brisbane, so... I'm sure I'll come up with a plan. This is a good start anyway. So let me know if you're going to join in. You can never have enough bowls or project things in your craft room. Because if you're like me and you do a few uh, projects, you sort of need to be a little bit organized and have everything that's to do with the project sitting with the project if you know what I mean then you can just pick it up and do a bit of stitching on it and everything's there that's why I have multiple balls of these multiples of these now because then it's just with it I do have multiples of heat solvable pens but that still is an issue I know I had it the other day and I was at the post office. Um, I'd forgotten to give to one of the new puppy owners the passport that the vet gives you when they have their first needle and their microchip. You get this cute little passport that goes with puppy. And then the future vets connected to the new owner can glance in there and see which vaccines they've had. It tells the owner when the next needle is due because I have um, three needles fairly close together to protect them from picking up horrible diseases when they start being socialised, you know, going to the beach and the park. And then they're yearly. And um, the little passport's used by the industry to track information. Plus, you know, when your dog's due again for another needle. Well, one of the little passports, Rosie's, was um, forgot to give to Rosie's mum. There was too many cuddles and kisses going on. So we realised probably about an hour after Rosie's parents were on the road. So I had to get to the post office and just post it to her. So I'm at the post office. I choose an envelope. I go to the table and I thought, oh, I'll have a pen in my handbag because the pens usually at the tables in the post office barely work. So I reach in, pull out a pen, and I'm writing away. And I look down, and it's the heat-soluble pen. I don't know how it's ended up in my handbag. It must have been rolling around somewhere, and I've just picked it up and shoved it in there for safekeeping. So I had a giggle because I thought, if this parcel lays out in the heat somewhere like on a you know back of a truck waiting to be going reloaded into another truck and it's in one of those crates the address is just going to disappear and it'll be the mystery where did rosie's passport get to so yeah i'm glad i realized and i think that's why the pen is still not on my desk it's still in my handbag, so I do need to go and rescue it. Okay, so I think you got the general gist. And as for stitching, decorative stitching, just go for it. 
you guys know what to do. You know what you like. Whether you want to do some circles or seed stitch or French knots. And oh my goodness, it's endless what you could do. The more interesting in the stitch, the better. So just go for it. I plan to fill it up. And then in the next video, we will do our feature. So whatever that is for you, mine's going to be a little wren. I'm thinking, here's another project for goodness sakes. Once this one's done, if it works and it's handy, which I think it will, I might make another one and do a hair because I'm seeing hairs everywhere here. Fairy wren, a fairy wren and hairs. So I might make one with a, a rabbit, you know, a hair. That'd be fun. There's another idea floating in my brain. But these are quick, easy projects. You could do Christmas ones and then pop Christmas goodies in it and gift them. Imagine this with a bit of cellophane and full of chocolates to give give someone. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? I'd love that. A useful a useful bowl. So yeah, like it's a bit puckered. Oh good, it's not. Um you could have this on a table if you've got a hallway and a little table and you put your keys there. You could throw your car keys in there. Having said that, it's probably not a good idea because that just makes it easy for the thief who breaks into your house to steal your car keys and your car. Am I twisted over that topic? No, not at all. Have I had break-ins into my house over the years and lost a car? Yep. So I don't exactly leave my keys out anymore for the little delinquents to grab. So having a beautiful bowl with a set of keys in it's probably a bit of a silly suggestion. But if you're lucky enough to live somewhere on this planet where you don't have delinquents roaming around, taking cars on joy rides, lucky you. Gone quiet. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> oh my goodness. Even the little country town my dad lives in is experiencing a spate of blooming thefts. Some little turkeys in town. It's only a tiny town. Like we're talking 1,200 people. It won't take much for the local lads to find them. And I don't mean the vigilantes, I mean the police. There's only a few opportunities, and if they've come from a neighbouring town, which is slightly bigger again, well, it won't take much to... The police soon get to know the names of everyone. So that's secured, so that's not going anywhere for my little wren. Just go down to that edge. See, already that feels so nice. Yum. Fabric just feels beautiful, even just with invisible stitch. I'm yet to do all of the, you know, meandering with stitch. All right, I think you guys have got the general gist. The only comment I would say is if you're going to add something coarse like this, um, really take your time to stitch each and every. See how it's woven? I'll put a stitch in all of those just to anchor it. I'll probably do that next just to make sure that it just doesn't disintegrate on me. Let's check our sides. Yeah. Yeah, love it. And our wren will be there and there. So that's good. All right, guys, I have a plan. I've got some stitching to do, and soon I'll have a bowl.
All right, and I guess in the next video, we will have a play with all of these little pattern pieces. I've got my visor fix ready, so that should all come to plan. Um, so if you did want this, there'll be a link in the description to Susanna's website where she's kindly created this little cluster of goodies for me. So you two can um, have a little, little pack of birds that you can use for future stitcheries. Even this one is just a great shaped bird. And then she's put in some little segments that allow you to change your fabrics. And you could even add more, like if you decided the top of the little bird, you wanted another color, you could cut a secondary pattern piece just by, you know, doing a bit of that. There's no reason why you can't then create more pieces within Susanna's pieces. Oh gosh, you could have a play with these. The little Robin very handy he's just gorgeous yeah see even wings like this you could put another layer of fabric here on top of that wing then do all your stitching to give that effect of lots of feathers you could even do a second little pattern here oh this would be really good Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, thank you. We've got ourselves some fun little birds to play with. Imagine a Christmas one. Gosh, I'm getting sidetracked. Imagine a Christmas scrappy bowl with a beautiful cardinal in the bottom and then fill that full of chocolates for someone. Oh, I should post my home address at the end of this video so you lot can send me a bowl full of chocolates. <laughs> Just joking. It's all good. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next Monday with a bit of an update and hopefully I've got myself organised and I'm ready to have a play with our little bird. Okay, talk to you all soon. Bye.